Hi, this is a dual purpose video because it's late and I have had enough today. Um, <coughs> Tom <coughs> CCL, thanks for all your um, support today. It was absolutely invaluable. Um, myself and my client who will be watching this video are very grateful. Um, I have one question for you. Do you think I could drill this is this is how roughly everything is sitting um, you know I, I've drawn your components from memory it's an approximation so I'm sure you'll figure out what I'm trying to do do you think <coughs> it would be possible to drill through the ply here with probably self tapping screws and pierce your supporting frame and you know get those threads to take I mean if it is if it's if it's one mil galvanized um, sheet steel just like it was stud work or something like that I know that will work I just need to use stainless steel self tappers um, if this is a heavier gauge of stainless um, I might have trouble piercing it if you could let me know and you know, if, if there's anything I'm missing there, if this isn't a good idea, drilling through your framework there, um, I'll be drilling through the plastic on, on that boundary area and the uh, galvanised frame. Um, I think this is the easiest way of stopping the very dramatic movement in this part of the ply. Fingers crossed the installers have actually set this into the floor, screwed it to the floor, you know, um, screeded it down. I don't think the screed has been done, but hopefully they've screwed that floor. Even if it's not fixed down, connecting those two components really gets me ahead because then we can go in with the Seeker 30, Seeker Door 31. This is the most troublesome boundary, this area here. Um, you know, all I can do is create a, a thin wall, probably about five six millimeters with seeker just get it packed in there carefully that's the only thing that is going to really bond this junction together I don't think I've got any chance of getting any seeker underneath here between the two layers which is why I would like to get some kind of mechanical fix in there I really think it will help um, Tom obviously you know we know this install is a bodge you're not tied to anything you say there's no you know you are helping me mitigate other people's mistakes so don't feel bound by any advice you give me but if you could give me a comment on these screws I'd really appreciate it. Um, to my client um, I've had great advice from Tom today who designs and produces this trap um, which is work, you know he's, he's worked on it with another manufacturer called Purus who make these drains um, I'm confident this is what you have um, <coughs> you've probably seen this on site yourself we're going to have a step there now there is absolutely nothing we can do about that the most important thing that Tom has told me today is this seeker bond seeker product sorry is um, it's good in water it's going to cure, it's going to stick to everything we've got in this space. Um, it may not last forever. If there's movement in this ply, that's where the failure will occur, first of all. But it is going to be able to fill and cover the horrendous rubbish that we have underneath these two areas, particularly. Um, so I'm probably not going to be on site tomorrow. Sorry for spinning this around. Um, I've got to order the Seeker product. I want to continue to think about this and get Tom's advice on that fixing. Um, but I'm very certain now that we can get all of these components really, really solidly fixed in. We've got an undercut under the plaster here. We can push Seeker under there. That's really going to help. All of this boundary, all underneath this tray component can be fixed in. Um, and I'm pretty sure 
we're heading in the right direction you know a year two years pretty confident about that beyond that who knows okay thanks for your time everybody